Hi, I'm Jason, and this is going to be the third tutorial on SOLIDWORKS API. And in this tutorial, we are going to make a Hello World macro in SOLIDWORKS API, and then cover the concepts of typecasting and early binding. So if you're already familiar with typecasting and early binding as programming concepts, you might just want to skip this tutorial and go on to the next episode. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so let's make a Hello World macro. So I'm going to start recording using the macro recorder. Then I'm going to open up a new document and I'll just make a cylinder. Okay, I'll stop that and save it. Okay, so now I'm going to open up that macro that I just saved, and then we'll look at the code. Alright, so this is the code that we're going to use to make our Hello World macro in SOLIDWORKS API. So I'm going to first just tidy up this first line of the code. And what I'd like to do is have a pop-up window that says hello world before we open up a new part document. So I want to be before this line. So right here I'm going to add uh, a hello world. So add hello world pop-up. So to do that I want to do I'm going to use the SW app object. So I'm going to do SW app dot send message to user and say hello world. Now you notice that after I typed that and clicked and uh, moved the cursor, that the some of the letters became capitalized, such as send me, send message to user. The send message, the S, the T, and the U, and M, became capitalized. So that means that this is probably correct. If I type that in correctly and I clicked off of it, these letters would not be capitalized. So if I we run this macro, we should get a hello world pop up right before a new document is opened. So let's run this. There's the pop-up, hello world. And then the rest of the macro should run as we recorded it. Okay, so far so good. Now the question is, how did I know to type this in to send a uh, pop-up window to the user? And how I did that was go by going to the SOLIDWORKS library there and looking up the top level uh, object which is the SOLIDWORKS object. So if I type in, if I search for SOLIDWORKS I'll be brought to the SOLIDWORKS interface if I click on members, uh, it will show me all the properties and methods associated with this object. And if I search for within this window, send message to user, you'll see that it has a send message to user method. So. The other question is, is there an easier way that I could have found this in, uh, rather than in going just to the uh, SOLIDWORKS object interface? And there is. You can use IntelliSense to find the properties and methods of any object in SOLIDWORKS while you're typing. And that's just a much easier way to program. But you notice IntelliSense is not working for SW app. If I say SW app, I hit it dot, nothing's popping up. It's almost as if the VBA precompiler doesn't even know what SWAP is. 
And the reason why is because SWF was casted as a generic object up here. So it's just an object. Because it's simply an object, the VBA compiler doesn't know what type of object SWF will end up being, and therefore has no idea what methods or properties will be available to SWF after it's been set. So even though we're setting it to the SOLIDWORKS uh, high-level object right here, the precompiler pre looks to how the SWF was casted to determine what properties and methods you'll be able to see through IntelliSense. Since it's cast as a generic object, we don't get to see what properties and methods are available to the highest level object in SOLIDWORKS. So, what, the, what you see right here is called late binding. So SWF right here was casted as a generic object, so it can take an on any type of object, and in this line, set to specifically the SOLIDWORKS object. This is called late binding. What we want to do, and which is best practice for at least definitely working in SOLIDWORKS API, is to early cast or uh, early bind our objects. To do that, instead of saying SWF can be a generic object, what I'm going to do is force it to be the force it to be only the specific object that we want it to be, which is the SOLIDWORKS highest level object. So I'll do SOLIDWORKS dot SOLIDWORKS, and now SWF can only be this. I'm highlighting right here this object, the highest level object in SOLIDWORKS. So now that we uh, early binded it to be this particular object, when I'm going, when I type in SWF and hit period, I'll see all the methods and properties available to me. So now when I type in send message to user, it's already taking me to the uh, it's already taking me to the method that I want to use just by typing in S E N. I can hit tab, and IntelliSense will write in the rest of the method. And also, if I keep typing, tell me what type of uh, variable I need to input in this uh, into this method, which in this case is a string. And I'll just say hello world again. Now you can start seeing why this is a uh, why early binding is a really good. Uh, best practice is really the best practice for programming in SOLIDWORKS API. It's because you are, when you start working with the object within your code, you will be able to quickly type in methods and properties and also see those methods and properties available to you as you code along. So if I run this program again, we should get two pop up windows in a row one saying hello world, another one saying hello world again. Hello world, and hello world again after I run it. And then the rest of the macro will, will run through. Now, now you notice that there's another object up here that's casted as a generic object, and that's part. And you notice when I try to work with part, I don't I don't see anything. And again, this is because it's casted as a generic object, and the VBA precompiler doesn't know what methods and properties will be available for part because it's just a generic object. We need to make it a specific object to have for IntelliSense to work. So what what is part? What we can do is look up the properties, uh, look up the method, the new document method for SWAP, which is the highest level SOLIDWORKS object, and see what type of object part is being set to. So let's look up, we're already here in the SOLIDWORKS interface members for this object. And if I search for this method, which is new document, I should be able to find information about what this method is doing. So if I search for new document, There it is, right here. Found it right here. And it can tell me what type of object it's returning. So 
if I scroll down, it's going to say that the return value is a newly created document. So what, what is this? Since it's underlined, I can click on it, and it'll take me to another section in the SOLIDWORKS library. And we can see that this is a different SOLIDWORKS object. It's model doc 2. So that must mean that this part should be a model doc 2 object. So I'm going to cast this part as not generic object, but as model doc 2. And it should still work because this is returning, this, as this line of code is returning a model doc 2 object and saying it to equal to part. And if part is a solid, uh, if part is a model doc 2, then this whole line of code should still work. So to test it, let's just run the code again. And again, all I did was change the casting type of part. So if I run it, hit hello world, hello world again, and the rest of the code executed just fine. So it worked. And if I try to work with the part object, if I type in part dot, I'll have all the methods and properties that I can use with this with this part object now. So, just to review, it's probably best in SOLIDWORKS API to early bind your objects. And in ev almost every macro that you make, you're going to have SW app created and probably a part object created. And I recommend that when you go back to your code and start editing it, that you early bind your SW app object to a SOLIDWORKS.SOLIDWORKS .solidworks, and early bind your part to a model doc 2. Now if you uh, if you had trouble keeping up with this uh, tutorial, just follow the link below to the 25 video course on programming in VB for absolute beginners. It's a really good resource. And again, if you're looking for other resources for SOLIDWORKS API, you can follow the link below to the CAD Sharp website and that's another good resource to go to. Okay, so that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time.